Shalom, shalom, chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And, you know, it's funny. We say Danoon Institute of Biblical Research, but I don't think we actually aired Ezekiel's message over there as of yet. Maybe we did. Maybe, you know, if I did and you guys didn't get to make comments, I apologize. Uh, let me, let's just run over there and see real quick. I will say, Unraveling the Mystery of Ezekiel 36 is on Israeli News Live. Let's switch the account. Oh, by the way, there's your Fact News Network right there. Uh, and I haven't done anything over there recently. And I said I was going to be doing breaking news there. I am going to be doing that. Just so many things going on, friends. I just have not had that opportunity to do that yet. So I apologize uh, for that. Let's see here. Your channel Pentecost and the fall feast. All right. No, I did not. All right. So we haven't done that as of yet. Uh, also, let me remind you guys real quick, those of you that are wanting to come, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. All right. Uh, Christians. No, here it is right here. Saturday, February the 8th, 2020, Orlando Conference. Uh, if you guys have been leaving comments on this, I apologize. I've not been able to approve any comments. Uh, our main computer, I, I messed it up. Nope, government didn't do it. I did it myself. I was trying to replace the battery in it. Uh, Brother Gary, I hadn't even told you about that one as of yet. But uh, yeah, I was trying to replace the battery. And there's like four wires that connect to the keyboard underneath there. And I had to disconnect those. And I did it kind of like the redneck way. Um, well, I don't know how to put them back in again. And so therefore, uh, my Asus computer, which I'd been using now for quite a while, is dead in the water. Very sad situation. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Anyway. So I haven't been able to approve the comments. Uh, Jamie, our, our webmaster, he's actually no longer in uh, Great Britain. He actually moved to California. So good luck to, uh, to Jamie on that. And if you ever need a good uh, guy that does that type of work, Jamie does very good. Gary does as well. And I think Brother Gary is, he might even be moonlighting for all I know. I have to ask Brother Gary about that. So if you guys need someone like that, uh, just, you know, Actually, actually, if you need someone like that, I need to put the contact information so you can get in touch with these wonderful brothers there. Uh, well, ja Jamie, uh, I, I can't say Jamie is a brother. Jamie is just a friend of my son's, and uh, that's how we know Jamie. But anyway, uh, so as soon as we get the password back up and going, I will approve any comments. But the conference, February 8, 2020, Orlando, uh, myself, John Moore, and my wife will be speaking there. We are going to be speaking, one of the things that uh, I know we're going to be touching on is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And that is going to rock a lot of people's worlds. When you're looking at Ezekiel's prophecy, I'll actually be getting into a little bit of this with you even before that conference, because on these Ezekiel prophecies, uh, going all the way to Ezekiel 39, it plays into that. You really have to understand about the kingdom of God, or as some like to say, the millennial reign. Uh, and I, I, I really encourage you to be prayerful about these things because it's going to totally uh, turn you on top of your head to look at some of these things. But anyway, uh, you can get tickets for this conference. There is a link right there on TicketBud. Just click on that. 10 a.m. John Moore will be speaking that morning. Uh, he's going to be talking about um, a little bit about pole shifts. Uh, the, from what he learned from the military when he was, uh, he's a green, former Green Beret, John is. I'll be there Tuesday on his program, by the way. And I uh, apologize to John, if you're watching this broadcast, I apologize. I have been getting my days mixed up. Sickness has been in the family. In fact, I couldn't even speak uh, last night uh, or even this morning. I was supposed to be on with Bonnie today. I'm, I'm actually having a hard time speaking as of now. I got a lot of pain. I got a some kind of infection inside. I think my wife said it's in the uh, saliva glands there. Uh, makes it very hard for the mouth to speak. So anyway, Embassy Suites Hotel by Hilton North. That is in Ultimate Springs, Florida. Same place we always hold the conference there. And uh, so we hope to see you there. There is very limited seating. It's not as much as we normally have there. Uh, so we had to do tickets. I think they're like 27. Let me just click on the link so we can see what it goes to there. Uh, you'll get this page here when you click on it. 
And yeah, $27.59. It's because there's some kind of a fee associated and it just automatically tax on the fee. It's actually, we're doing it for $25, but that's just the way it works out. So, and, it, and even on there, it does have the address so you can see where you're going there at the NBC Suites, NBC Suites by Hilton. Uh, so do check that out. Get your tickets. Uh, we'll be glad to see you there. John Moore, he's also doing a cruise with some uh, friends of his there uh, that's going off of, uh, I think, Cape Canaveral, something like that. So we're really looking forward to a lot of the people that are coming and uh, be a part of that. Uh, listen, to this is a little off the record there. Let me just, I, I need to pull up Facebook for you on our Israeli News Live page there. Uh, I don't know why I'm coming up like that, but anyway. Um, if you go to Israeli News Live and you go to our, or go to Facebook, go to Stephen Ben Dinun, which is my, I do it under my pen name, then go to Israeli News Live, or just type in Israeli News Live on Facebook. This is our Facebook page. We've really been putting in a lot of news links and uh, Sister Rosa has been a great help in sending us that extra information. But we have on here live right now, Virginia meeting on gun control. We had posted this video earlier and this was from News to Share. News with the number two and then Share. Uh, this gentleman, I don't know the guy, somebody had shared me his link. He was there at the, the meeting covering this in Virginia about the Second Amendment rights uh, and, and how that situation is going there. Uh, I can't encourage people enough uh, as if this stuff goes across America, get proactively involved in, uh, for you know peaceful uh, standing for the rights that has been given to us in the Constitution. Believe me, they can't change anything if we really stand up for our rights. And I think that people should stand for our rights. So I did post that on there and I wanna thank whoever the guy is with news to share. God bless you, my friend, for, for sharing this with us. That was wonderful. We put it on our, our page there. And I wanted to share that here also on Israeli News Live. Uh, maybe give the guy a thumbs up on his page there. He's This is his page here, news to share on uh, um, uh, his Facebook page there. Don't know what all he covers or anything, but uh, you know, he had that on there tonight, and we really appreciate um, what he did there. So, anyway, and and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure as you know, as being a patriot, he's probably pro-Trump, things like that. I'm not here to criticize the man on that. I just appreciate his stance for the for the Second Amendment. So, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys as well. All right, let's get into this real quick now. Um, I'm going to go back to Israeli News Live. I didn't post it over there on Danoon Institute. I will get these posted on our Danoon Institute page as well because we got a lot of listeners over there that are not part of Israeli News Live. And I have to try to remember that, especially on these teaching messages that we have. And, uh, you know, because some people really appreciate the, those type things. And we are going to get more into teaching. As I made the statement to you guys uh, the other day, um, you know, I realize there are people that just love President Trump. It's not going to matter what I say, how much truth I try to share with people. That's just not going to change. And I, I just come to the place that I'm like, okay, that's fine. I understand. You feel that way. And uh, this, this is the nice thing about the United States of America. We have freedom. We have freedom of expression, freedom to vote for who we so choose to vote for. Uh, and so I think everybody has a right to do that. And I don't want to continue to... Um, be a thorn in your side when it comes to trying to, to bring out the things that I, I feel that are important for you to know. Uh, I mean, unless there's something breaking that I'm not aware of that comes out and we need to share some of those things there. Uh, other than that, we're going to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ because uh, other than the breaking news, things like that, Israeli News Live, I do want it to become more of a... Um, a review of news and fact news network more for our breaking news stories is the way I'm going to try to really get into this. Uh, but tonight it's going to be in the teaching side of things because of uh, because of all the things that are going on. And so I wanted to go back and, uh, and oh, by the way, I don't know, I'm sure many of you saw the video. Yeah, about 12,000 people saw the video there that I did uh, with uh, Yitzhak Shapiro. He's also again with the Zechariah uh, 23 uh, part or Zechariah chap, chapter 8 verse 23 and you know I, I really wish uh, Yitzhak Shapira would really wake up and see these things just how bad how sinister this is going on there but 
it's just not looking very good there. Anyway, and unraveling the mystery of Ezekiel 36 there, uh, I shared this here with you guys, and I wanted to take, and just going back to the end of this here, um, we're going to kind of pick up at the last part of Ezekiel 36 kind of as a recap tonight, okay? So as I went into that, uh, kind of going back up to verse 25, I think, 26 here, okay? And just as a reminder for those of you that are listening here tonight, and, and I do apologize. I know I've got a lot of you are saying, Steve, we should go back where you were sharing the screen. I, I am going to go back to that. But when I lost the other computer there, my OBS uh, was working great on that for screen record, but not on this computer here. Uh, I did work some of the bugs out with this one. I actually came very close to getting it working. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, not enough to be able to do this broadcast with tonight. So we're back to our TV screen. Uh, there is an advantage of the TV screen. Now, we'll tell you the, what the advantages are for those of you that are not aware. Uh, when you're using the TV screen, and maybe if I backed up a little bit, got closer to the monitor, that might help too. But the advantage of the TV screen is that the Google, Google searches, the YouTube searches, they don't pick up what they consider to be copyright content when it's on this, unless there's audio that they would pick up. They do, or they already pick up audio. So when I'm on the TV monitor, I don't have to worry about getting strikes very much. When I'm on the screen share, yeah, then there's that, there's that risk. It's one of the nice things that I've always liked about the TV screen, just so you know about that. Anyway, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, a new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put uh, within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. You know, i tell you what. I think, because I told you I was going to do from Ezekiel 35 all the way to Ezekiel 39. I think tonight's a good time to bring up one of the issues here in Ezekiel for you. So let's let's go ahead and deal with this right now. Uh, waiting for it to load. Just give me a moment. And uh, here we go. It's... Let's see if I can find this quickly enough. Um, all right, you know, this is going to be one, and this is why I need to do it kind of separately as well. We are going to be going back into this. If you remember, I originally talked about, and these two nations, these two countries shall be mine. We will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. All right, this is where Edom is talking, right? I will, I will make thee a perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and you shall know that I am the Lord. All right, this is God talking about Edom, or yeah, Edom, right? And I will fill his mountain with his slain. I'm kind of going backwards there. And, you know, I was looking at back at this time here, I really strongly looked at the Catholic Church as fulfilling Edom's prophecy and this right here. And I even took where the two state solution, because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. We will possess whereas the Lord was there taking uh, the state of Israel as well as the, uh, the West Bank, and that being so. But as I have been uh, sharing with you in other videos on this, we have begun to discover, even written amongst the very writings of the Jewish Encyclopedia, that the Pharisees were actually half Edomites. All right, so very interesting perspective, but I'm going to really break that down a lot more for you guys later. All right, so let me see if I can find where I was wanting to share with you, though. Um, uh, let's see, the whole heart, as I'll just rejoice over the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee, thou shalt be desolate. You know, this may not be it, but let me just pull this one out right here, just for an example, okay? Um, as thou didst rejoice over the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all of Edom, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All right? Do you realize the fulfillment of this prophecy was in 70 A.D.? 
And this is why I really have to deal with Ezekiel 35 kind of separately, because in Ezekiel 35, you really have got to see the historical side of this. King Herod, for example, was from Esau. He was one of Esau's own descendants. He was part of that conversion. All right. And the Hasmonean dynasty were half Jew, half Edomite. All right. And what did they do? They did rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel because why? They took all the lands that belonged to the house of Israel as well. They encompass that area. And, uh, and, 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 and there's a lot more to be said about that. So we'll, we'll come back to that a little bit later. I don't want to get sidetracked on that. Anyway, but anyway, God says here, And a new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and, you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep mine ordinances and do them. And, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I'll tell you something. This is an amazing prophecy, but you remember when God said to the children of Israel, long back when they were in Egypt, He's promising them they're going to He's going to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. Now I did a message, I don't know, sometime last year about the land flowing of milk and honey. Let me just see if I can pull that up for you as well. I can tell I'm struggling with my voice right now. But uh, that land that was flowing with milk and honey, I did a message to show our friends that Jesus Christ was that actual fulfillment. Uh, and, I, and I did this. Let me just see. Milk, uh, honey, I think maybe I put that in the title. Did I? No. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Oh, maybe it's over on the other side. I'm not really sure. Land flowing... Let's, oh, wow, 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 wow. Let me, let me just see. I got to see real quick because if it's there, I want you to know where you can look this up at, all right? So, but I did a, a special message just on that, looking at the prophecies, and, uh, and it was to show that Jesus Christ, you know, he was the fulfillment because there's, there's scriptures that all point to that, that he's the land, uh, that he is you know, come and see and taste the Lord, that He is good. Uh, we know that He is the bread of life. We, you know, everything just applies to Him, right? So, uh, I had done this. Here it is, land flowing with milk and honey. There it is, right there. Praise be to God. Yes, it's on the Noon Institute. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it up here so I can actually place this inside of uh, the broadcast for you here. Yes, and there weren't very many views over there. It's only 2,839. So many of you guys have never even seen this video. Let's listen just for a second. Uh, I had been saying we would do this at 5 p.m. Eastern, but for some reason it seems to just work out better here. Let's see. To, uh, see you guys there. So, um, time to... Let's see. Oh, it's actually live so too. Lovely. But even in my heart now, I just feel your spirit. On tonight, is that land flowing with milk and honey? So about 10 minutes that into that the video, recorded, you want to listen. I believe Moses recorded that. In All right, let's just see. I want to get a couple. 33 of verse 3, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay. Leviticus 20, 24, and uh, a land All right. that you may grow thereby. Here you go, and New so Testament. You have tasted that the Lord is gracious. See, as new babes desiring the sincere milk of the word, right? There's one right there, right? All right, so let's see. Hang on. I just want to find those scriptures, you know, because these things are important to know. Let's see here. Where else did I take it to? So let's see. Hey, brother, did Moses say that Christ was the honey? Well, you're going to get it in a moment. I'm going to have to look some of this up as we go because I went, didn't quite get all my scriptures up for you guys before I started. All right. Says. Let's see. In the house of Israel. So there is where we get a land flowing with milk and honey. Then we can also go and we can read this one here as well. All right. Out of thy belly. Oh, that's right. Out of your belly shall flow waters, waters of living water. water. So he's uh, Part of it, I shall. 
not allowed to gather that that uh, and honey. It is truly the most day. You don't have to go out because we know that Christ is, is, but you know, that's what blessed my soul so much. And then, of course, as we look back over here again, oh, I missed something. Hang on. Ever drink of the water that I shall give him, never thirst, but the water that I shall give him, being him a well of water springing up. Okay. All right, I, 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 won't, I won't spend all the long time on it. All right, I'll put it in there. We'll save it up here so when I do all the links, I can make sure I put it in there for you guys. You'll want to listen to that. But anyway, that land of flowing of milk and honey is Christ. Now, so we go back to Ezekiel. He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep mine ordinances. Now, when God talks about putting his spirit in you, we got to remember too in Genesis right here, right? It says right here. Uh, he takes from the earth or from the, the dust of the earth, right? And, and from there it says, he breathes into the nose, okay? Right? Nishmat Chaim. Nishmat Chaim. He breathes in his very own life into that nostrils of a clay figure that's been molded from the ground uh, that we call Adam which and when Adam represents both Adam and Eve because she's inside of him they're one they're one being right all right and it says Adam you got to remember this because we're going to come back to this in a little bit right so Adam he becomes uh, as a singular being, the, the, uh, 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 a soul that has God's life in him, right? But when he breathes in there, it's Chayim, he breathes that plural form of that life. Now, kind of like I'd said before in that other video, I didn't have everything out because I would forgot about one thing that I wanted to bring out. So I'll, I'll just share it with you right now. I just forget exactly where it's at. I know it's in the book of Matthew. This is where he breathes on his apostles after the resurrection. And he says to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, right? And uh, so let's just pull that up real quick so we know exactly where that's at, all right? And so he says to them, uh, it's right here, receive ye all right, and it's going to be the Holy Ghost, and I may have, I didn't do it right. Hang on. Okay, he breathed on them. Let me try like that. Breathed on them. Here we go. John. Here we go. John twenty. wasn't in It wasn't in Matthew. I apologize. In John twenty, verse twenty two says right here. And when he had said this, right. Then wait, let me back up verse 20, chapter 20, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. All right, now that's so important, and I'm going to put it up so we can see this on here as well. I'm just excited today, friends. And uh, because our God is a wonderful God. Uh, he really is a wonderful, wonderful, almighty Savior. You know, and so let's go to verse 22. Just want to make sure we get to the right place. Whoop, too, a little bit too fast, Steve. A little shorter. All right, here we go. There it is right there. All right. And because uh, I want you to be able to see this for yourself, not just Brother Steve says it. I want you to be able to see he breathed on them, right? He breathed on them. Why did he do it that way? He was showing that he was the same God in the beginning that created Adam from the dust of the earth and that he breathed in him that breath of life. All right. So it's very important we understand that. So he says, when I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep mine ordinances and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. All right. Now, when he says you will dwell in my land, this is the reason why I wanted you to see this part when I took you back and I was showing you that you know the video there that I said that he is that land of flowing with milk and honey because when we are in Christ we are in the land we're in the promised land 
You know, you're already in heavenly places with what? With Christ Jesus. We rule and reign with him right now. Right? And what do we rule and reign over? We rule over sin. We rule over Satan, the devil. And I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll put it to you blunt. You know, if, you're, if you are still living a life of sin, looking forward to a day of, okay, Christ's going to come and there's not going to be any more problems anymore, you've missed the whole gospel message. Because, see, this is what ministers do. They, they don't tell you the truth about it. You know, I mean, I used to sit there when I was a young guy, you know, I used to go to ministers and I'd say to them, brother, pray for me. You know, I mean, uh, uh, tell me, what, how do I get complete victory? I don't want to make mistakes, you know, and, and listen, I know you're always going to make mistakes in life. I'm not saying that you won't stumble, you won't trip, you won't fall here and there. But the thing is, is when you are born again, when you've received that life of Christ inside of you, he's given you everything you have need of to be ruling and reigning with him in Christ Jesus and you rule and reign over the devil, over his demons. You know, in other words, you have the power to say no. You know, didn't the Bible say you have the power to bind the devil in the name of Jesus Christ? You don't have to serve sin. All right? So, Different message, and I don't want to get into all that right now. So let me go back to Ezekiel here. I'm just trying to show you these fulfillments here, right? Then shall you remember your evil ways and your doings that were not good, and you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Now, if you remember, last time we did the message here on Ezekiel, I shared with you that fulfillment of that was actually in the book of Acts right here, right? Uh, Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said, Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? All right. And if you ever look that word up, prick that Greek word right there, very interesting word there. In fact, let me just, let me just share with you. Let's go right over to this uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 37. And, you know, I, I mean, if, I, if it's in Hebrew, I, I know a lot of how to translate so but I also even in Hebrew I still do it from from a very deep study on that uh, which by the way I'm in my last two years of uh, Hebrew study uh, at uh, the college affiliated there with uh, J Jerusalem University the last two fourth and fifth year I'm actually doing them simultaneously here uh, this year so do pray for me there because I'll have completed uh, well, I will have uh, the equivalency of five years of Hebrew study at the University of uh, Jerusalem. But anyway, uh, listen, let's see here. Where are we at there? Okay, here we go. Pricked right here. Of course, this is Greek. This is not Hebrew. Uh, to pierce thoroughly, that is to agitate violently uh, uh, to the quick, right? So it's, it's something that has just really troubled them. You know, they're, they're, they're greatly bothered by what has happened there. See, to peer, see, what, in other words, it pierced their own heart. You know, because Christ had died, and so for them it was a piercing of their own heart. And so when you look at this, and this is, this is the prophecy in Ezekiel. Now when they heard this, uh, excuse me, um, this is in the book of, of, of Acts. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, right? But it's, it's actually from... Ezekiel 2, a prophecy. Then shall you remember your evil ways and your doings that were not good, and you shall loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. Okay? Not for your sake do I do this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Right? You know, it's kind of like the Lord's Prayer. You know, I, I said to you that before. You know, the Lord's Prayer... In fact, the Lord has been giving me even more revelation on his, on his prayer. You know, he starts it off, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's to sanctify your name. Well, Ezekiel 36 tells you God how he's going to sanctify his name. That's when he brings the house of Israel back, right? And uh, you know what? Let's just pull this up, all right? Sanctify thy name. Uh, sanctify thy name. Maybe, maybe I did it wrong. Hallowed, oh gosh. 
I, I think I can just scroll up and find it. All right, we're down there about 30 there. Let's, let's go back up a little bit. Okay, here we go, here we go. But I had pity upon my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, whether they came. Therefore say the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake of house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations, whether you came. And I will sanctify my great name, which hath been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified uh, in your, you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. That's fulfilled in Acts. Okay? You got to remember the scripture says, and let me just pull this one up for you too. And I'm kind of rambling in every direction here. So, all right, uh, Israel, sand of the sea, all right, though, though Israel be as the sand of the sea, all right, here we go, Isaiah 10, 22, because when you look at this, when you look at the prophecy here, the gathering of the house of Israel, we got to remember all the prophets, what the prophets said, how did he say he'd bring them back, all right? So if we go to Isaiah 10, 22, and it's in many places in the scripture, right? And here's one right here. Okay, we're going to share you with this one here. All right. And he says here, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21, A remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto God the mighty. Wow! Yay, yay, yay! Notice that! What kind of God is it? To God El Gibor. Ooh, man, do you realize what that is? All right. Oh, glory to God. Hang on. All right, let me show you what I mean by that one right there. Let's go back to Isaiah here, right? You want to see what that is right there? I shared that with you guys not long ago, but I got, I got to do it again. I got to bring this up again. All right, Isaiah 9, right? For a unto us a child is born, a son is given, right? And the government is upon his shoulder, and his name is called Pierre Yoes El Gibor. There it is. Okay. Vekra Shemo. Okay. Vekra Shemo. This thing's not wanting to highlight. There we go. All right. We'll just highlight all that. Pele Yoets. Okay. Which is, uh, um, he's called, the, uh, okay, the counselor. Right? And then right here, El Gibor. Now, who's called that El Gibor? Ki yeled. All right? The child that is born among them, that child that would be born by the virgin. All right? Now, I know that in, 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 the, in the Masoretic text, they use the word Alma, which means young maiden, as people like Tovia Singer would say to you. But in the Septuagint, they didn't use Alma. Okay, and the Septuagint, it's Bitula. It is a virgin shall conceive. Bitula. Right? But that Bitula, that virgin, that child that she's going to give birth to is called El Gibor. The mighty God. Right? So when we look at Isaiah here, over here, and it says, A remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto who? Gibor, the mighty God. To, and, and who's that mighty God? He's a little child. A son, a child is born unto us. A son is given unto us. The son of almighty God. Now try to, okay, Yixak, try to put that into your little, oh, oh, all the Jewish men's are sons of God. Oh, please. Get excited about Jesus Christ for once. Amen. For though thy people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them shall return, and extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. All right, so when we're looking at Acts chapter 2, when we're looking at Ezekiel 36, right? And he says, therefore, I will take you from all among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. And I will sprinkle what? Ooh, praise be to God. I'm, I'm about ready to just jump right out of this seat right here. Right? 
I'll sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols, right? He's going to do all that, but he gathers them out of the nations. But to tell you how many are coming at first, Isaiah tells us that number, number, only a small remnant. Even though there is the sand of the sea, a remnant comes. Because you have to understand, he's going to bring them back to their land and they physically come back according to Acts, right? They do come back physically to the land, right? And we find out in the book of Acts, if you back up a little bit here, all right? Ah, let's see here. Let's back up far enough. We're in the book of Acts here. All right, and we find out that, and it shall come to pass, let's say that God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, now, now that's, that's Peter quoting the prophecy there in, in, in Joel, right? But here they are right here. And here, how here are we every man born in our own tongue wherein we were born, right? Whoop, whoop, went too many, sorry about that. Right, they were doing the wonderful works of God. All right, and these men that were from is from they were Judean by birth, but they were from all these lands, from all over the earth. They were brought back. Devout men with their own proselytes as well. So they were both Jew and Gentile, or house of Israel, technically. They were not, uh, Ju uh, they, they were Judean as far as their ancestors were from that region of the world. That's why they were referring to them as Judean. It's not Jews, okay? And we know this because when we get down to, I think it's around verse 36. Let's see where I find it here. Yeah, there we go. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. See, it was the house of Israel that came home. Assuredly, that God made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard that, they were pricked at their heart, right? Now, remember, Ezekiel said, I will sprinkle clean water on you, right? And what does it say in the book of Acts right here? Now when they heard they were pricking the heart and they, they said to Peter, what, what must we do? Then Peter answered them. Wow, Peter's going to answer them, tell them what to do. Okay? He answered them. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's your water. The baptism. Now you're going to get sprinkled with clean water right that's how we were closing out here in Ezekiel 36 we went into these things we saw these great beautiful things I, I won't spend any more time on that um, and of course you know God is reminding him he didn't do it for their sake but he did it for his own name's sake right Lord be it known unto you I'd be ashamed and confounded for your ways O house of Israel Thus saith the Lord, in the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited and the waste places shall be built. And that's another thing too. Cleanse you from all your iniquities. Right? Well, when is the day of cleansing? Come on, people. This isn't some future fulfillment for the house of Israel, the day of cleansing. The, how, the day of cleansing, Daniel tells us even when that happens in chapter 9, right? And we get down to around verse, what, 25, 26, something like that, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, yes, yeah, verse 24, 70 weeks are decreed upon thy people, upon thy holy city to do what? To do what? Finish the transgression to make an end of sin and to forgive iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal the vision and the prophet to anoint the most holy place. Know therefore and discern that from the going forth uh, of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to one anointed a prince. See, shall be seven weeks and for three score and two weeks and shall be built again with a broad place and a moat and troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall anointed one be cut off. All right, so the Messiah would be crucified. Wow, there it is. There it is. There's where it all is. So he didn't do it for their sake. But as, this, as the prayer, the Lord's prayer goes, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sanctify thy name. How did God sanctify his name? He brought the house of Israel back. He brought at least a remnant, as Isaiah prophesied, of the house of Israel back. They also believed. Therefore, when they returned back to their lands, they were able to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. His kingdom was, was, was growing daily. There were 3,000 that day alone that believed. Right? 
You know, and when, you know, I know Shapiro did his little math thing from, from Zechariah's prophecy. He said, you know, where there's force of seed and the Jews are going to take a hold of the, the force of seed and there's going to be 10 from the nation. So he said, that's, that's four of them. That makes 40. And you got 70 nations. So that's 2,800 uh, Jews. Take a hold of that one guy. Well, it doesn't say uh, tzitzit. It doesn't say, uh, well, it actually says kanaf. And it doesn't say kanafia. It doesn't say kanafiot. It doesn't say anything about plural. It just says one wing. So we know it doesn't have anything to do with the tzitzit in that particular passage there. But even if it did, and if it says 2,800, let's just say that Shapiro was right on this. We'll give him benefit of the doubt. All right. Well, it just so happens that day on the day of Pentecost were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So if you wanted to take the 2,800 from the Jewish man, Ish Yehudi, that they took a hold of, well, he had about 3,000 souls, which 2,800 would fit that just fine, wouldn't it? Praise be to God. See, if you just stay with the Word of God, you ain't got to worry about no mistakes or anything, right? So let's get into Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and the Lord carried me out in the Spirit, set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Now, it's kind of interesting. He tells us in 36 what's going to happen to them, but now he's going to talk about a different part of what happened there at the time of Christ when he was here right in the midst of the valley it was full of bones now i remember i used to think that the holocaust pits were a part of this but it wasn't and again i have to say father forgive me i didn't know all right and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy over these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Wow. Get the Lord God into these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. All right. Now, I told you earlier, don't forget what we were looking at over here in Genesis. Oh, gosh, was it Genesis? Yeah, Genesis is one. Okay, but also he breathes into him the breath of life, right? So hold that thought close, right? So we come back over here, right? He says here, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Okay, thus saith the Lord God, right? All right, now let's drop down. Okay, so he breathes into them, or excuse me, uh, he will breathe, uh, will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live again. Okay, there's your breath, the ruach or the spirit, the spirit of what? Of life, God's own life. He's going to breathe in them that they might live again. Because why? Adam forsook what God had given him, and the way to the tree of life was then cut off for all of his descendants thereafter. All right? He forfeited it. He lost it. I'm actually in the wrong book. Sorry, I meant to hit Genesis. He lost it. That was that breath of life that was breathed into his nostrils. Okay? Christ comes along to repair that broken part there. This is why even the house of Israel, they had sinned, they had done so much sin and idolatry and uh, building all these altars and stuff till finally God disperses them to the entire earth. And so they think our hope is gone, our bones are dried up. We never even received the promise of the coming of the Messiah. You know? And that, that's why I was, what I was going to look at a moment ago here a little bit controversial you know as far as in Peter I, I know that Peter it seems to that he speak about that he spoke to, the, to those spirits that were dead from the times of Noah so did he speak to anyone else I don't know I don't know but anyway there's a lot of things that, that could be said on that, but I have to kind of leave it there because I didn't prepare for it so I could share it with you properly. All right, so anyway, we continue on verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring, uh, bring up uh, flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Okay? Ruach, again. Vechayetim. All right, right here. There it is. And he gives to them. Venatati bechem. See, 
He says he gives it. It's a free gift. This is what Christ did for us. It's a free gift. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. All right, so it goes on. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a commotion. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I beheld, and lo, there were sinews upon them. And flesh came upon them and covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Just like it was in the Garden of Eden. When God created the man. When, when this body was laying there. And it was all laid out. looked perfectly like a man. But there was still no life in him. And so the prophet Ezekiel is seeing the same thing, but now it's all the house of Israel instead that's laying there. Right? Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. Right? Hinavi el haruach. When we're talking about haruach, not just the breath. That's like saying to the Spirit, prophesy. Right? Say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, breathe upon these slain that they may live. And then we see, as I said to you earlier, you know, Christ comes along. The book of John. He breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That would really be Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach had come. Alright? Now, not only that, if you remember, what did Job say? This is in chapter 19 of Job, verse 25 to 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin destroys, it doesn't really say the word worms, they just put in there, skin worms, destroys this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, not another what? Not another set of eyes. Though my reins be consumed within me. Another one for you, right? Genesis chapter 50, what did Joseph say? Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, but God will surely remember you and bring you up out of this land into the land which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel. Who? The children of Israel, saying, God will surely remember you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being 110 years old and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin, right? Remember that? But we also have two, what is it? Um, no, not, not Acts. Is it Corinthians? Hmm. Maybe, uh, might be missing one here. We'll come back to it. But anyway, Joseph's bones were taken up. And I, I know I'm thinking of one in the book of Hebrews, but I, I didn't put it up there, so we'll just have to skip over it for now. So he prophesied, prophesied unto the breath. Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. So they, it came, he breathed upon them. So I prophesied and he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great host. Then said he unto the, uh, to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, O my people. I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. Whoa. How could we miss that one? Uh, and I, I'm just going to have to guess because I, I know it's in the book of Matthew. Uh, but I didn't, again, I was kind of in a rush. I've not been able to speak very well today. I took a little bit of medicine so I could speak. Um, and is it chapter 28? Let's just try it. It's right after the crucifixion, right? Began to dawn. Oh, okay, no, it's actually, I think it's uh, maybe chapter 27. Okay, uh, probably saying took 30 pieces. Okay, uh, marvel greatly the governor Barabbas. 
Okay, uh, they crucified him, garments, right, passed him, wagging their head. He couldn't save others. We didn't do all these things here. These also crucified. Yeah, okay. All right, and straightway of them ran and took, okay, and he cried again with a loud voice. He yielded up the ghost. Mm. He yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent twain to, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And what does it say right there? And the graves were what? Opened. And many bodies of the saints that slept arose. And what did they do? They came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. What did it say in Ezekiel? See? And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O oh my people, and I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. And you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, saith the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, unto, unto thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, and take another stick, write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and the house of Israel, his companions. And join them for thee one to another into one stick that they may become one in thy hand. And when the children of, uh, of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not tell us what meanest thee by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his commands, and I will put them and unto him together with, one, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be no more, they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in my hand before their eyes. Okay? That's what he says right there, right? And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, whether they are gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them in their own land. Those two sticks, friends, what caused both the house of Judah and the house of Israel to come back home? It was two sticks. It was the cross itself. And those sticks were bound together. And Christ himself hung on that cross, and that is what brought the house of Israel home with the house of Judah. And saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, right? And he's going to bring them back to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Christ Jesus fulfilled that prophecy right there. And as it says, David would be their king, right? Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any transgression, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God, and my servant David shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. Jesus Christ is the shepherd. He is the son of David sitting on the throne of David. He is the one that is ruling and reigning right now. He sits at the right hand of the Father. Do you realize that right hand represents the power? In other words, he has taken the very power of Almighty God as the kingdom and he now rules and reigns over his own dominion and his children are the dominion. Both Jew and Gentile, both house of Israel and house House of Judah and no longer twain but they are one stick by the cross of Jesus Christ that has bound them together and that my friend is the fulfillment of that scripture David my servant shall be their prince forever and so he is the son of David is David himself my dwelling place also shall be over this is another one right here oh my gosh you got to look at this one too i forgot about this here my dwelling place shall be over them right vehaya okay mish uh mishkana alehem vayahiti lehem 
Okay? And the nation shall know that I am the Lord that sanctify Israel when my sanctuary, mik, watch this, Mikadashi, okay? Doesn't say Bayat Mikodesh, it says Behayot Mikodashi, Mikodashi, Betochem. All right? So it's the holy, okay? The Kodesh of God, the holiness of God, as we also refer to this as the sanctuary of God, shall be in the midst of them, right? Forevermore, right? So it says dwelling place shall also be over them. Now I want to show you some things here. Let's look at Leviticus. I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. Do you know, right there, Natati Meshekaina. Betochechem. There it is again. And again, it's the life right there. Betochechem ve haiti lechem. God's own life. All right? This, this is amazing what is actually written here. And Christ is that tabernacle, right? Let's just do this in closing real quick. 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. This is why we shouldn't do things that are wrong. Okay? 2 Corinthians. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? You're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, isn't it, isn't it fascinating, right? Here we have right here. This is in um, Corinthians. Paul wrote this. Paul, Paul took the very scripture that is found in Leviticus, which I just showed you right there, and I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you and I will walk among you and, you, and I will be your God and you shall be my people. Paul took that scripture there and he applied it to Christ dwelling within you. The Sukkah. Remember when I did the message recently about fulfilling Sukkot? Do you know that even the Qumranite community, those that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, actually believed according to the scriptures when, God, when it says that God would make with his own hands a temple, that they knew that that was going to be a human temple? That the Messiah would be that temple and that we would come inside of that temple, the God-man, Jesus Christ, and we would offer our incense through him. Remember when Jesus said, in that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. There it is right there. You know when you know that you are in him, and he is in you, and he is in the Father, and, you are, and the Father is in him? When you get the revelation that you are the temple of Almighty God, and that you are inside of him, and that your praises, everything you do, that is, you're, you are now within the temple, you are in Sukkot. Okay, the sukkah is the temple. This is, oh my gosh, the only way you can keep the sukkot. Remember the scripture says, it even says plainly, those that did not keep the sukkot, there would be no rain upon that nation. That's including the Gentiles, right? Because the Gentiles also came into the common, to, or to the salvation of Jesus Christ. And when you enter into Christ, you've come into the sukkah. You've come into the temple. You are now in Him. He's in you. And He is in the Father, and the Father is in Him. Okay? That's the fulfillment of Sukkot. And when it says He will not give any rain at that, for that nation that does not keep it, what is the rain? Former and latter rain. It is the More Geshem. Okay? The More Geshem is a teaching rain. It never said, it never said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They say former latter rain. It actually says the teaching rain. So you'll if you're not in the sukkah, if you're not in keeping sukkot, if you're not 
inside the field. If you're not in the tabernacle, which is Christ, you can't get the rain. You can't get the latter rain because there's no way to get the Holy Spirit can't reveal it to you because you're on the outside trying to keep carnal laws. You understand? Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful what we're talking about right here. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, Paul says. As God has said, I, dwell, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. He is El Gibor. Everything that is in there. Ezekiel's prophecy coming to pass. Oh, man. <laughs> Everybody's looking for a kingdom to be set up here. You'd be surprised. you really be surprised. You should be there right now. You know what's coming very soon. Oh, they're going to build a third temple. I'd never step a foot in it. That's blaspheme of God. You want to know why? Because you reject Christ as your temple. You reject His word that you are the temple of God for Him to... The Holy of Holies is to dwell within you. He is the temple, but you also are that temple. And your heart is where the Holy of Holies, that's where, he, that's, where the, that's where the Holy Spirit is to come and dwell within you. And by the word, I don't want to get it mixed up when we talk about this word Shekinah, because I said it in here, the Shekinah means dwelling place. Okay? It's the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit that dwells in the dwelling place. I trust this is a blessing. I, I know I kind of hacked it all up and everything. And I thank God He gave me a little bit of ability to spit. My, I'm not even sore now. That's the funny thing. Here I have been, I started speaking. My jaw was hurting and everything and all the pain left me while I was talking to you. So, Sister Bonnie, I apologize. I got, there's so many things happened today earlier and I apologize if you happen to watch this message there. Uh, we were going to try to do a broadcast for Hebrew Nation Radio, and that didn't turn out uh, so well, so I apologize for that. We're gonna, I'm going to actually be loading these teachings here on Ezekiel uh, onto that on our broadcast over there as well. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed evening. Don't forget again, those of you that want to visit our website, I don't even know where it's at on here now. Uh, somewhere in here, somewhere up here. Well, maybe I don't even have it up there now, but anyway... Uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org, uh, and uh, I bring you over here because, uh, of course, our address is on there if you want to write us to Noon Institute, 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard. That always pops up at the end down here, too, for you. But it's the conference coming up Saturday, February the 8th, 2020, Orlando Conference. Uh, if you're having trouble getting a ticket on there, put your comment in there. I will get with Jamie, get the password, and if there's anybody that had a problem with that, I'll find out the comments and we'll get that taken care of. Thank you for watching, Erev Tov. Good evening.